Howdy, Mr. Drysdale. Howdy, Mr. Drysdale. Sorry to bother you. No, no, no. Always a pleasure. Sit down, sit down. Well, this ain't exactly a set and visit. All we want is a little standing up time. Well, what can I do for you? Well, Jethro here has got into his head he'd like to commence serving what they call his uh, military hitch. Oh, yes, sir. I want to volunteer. Well, very commendable, very patriotic. But I think the government would prefer that you finish your education first. Well, I done gone clean through school. Yeah, Jethro graduated sixth grade. Yes, sir. I asked him a class. You, Jethro? Yes, ma'am. Other fellas no higher than this. <laughs> Jethro, uh, graduating from the sixth grade is a fine accomplishment, and we're all very proud of you. Well, thank you. But there's more, right, Miss Hathaway? Oh, yes, indeed. Junior high, high school, college. Well, yes, ma'am. Uh, we know there's more education to be got. But Jethro is anxious to commence serving his country now, and Granny's on his side. Granny? Yes, you see, Jethro ain't got his full growth yet. And the more he grows, the more he eats. And Granny is wore to a frazzle, keeping him led out and filled up. And she says, uh, let the government feed him for a spell. He can serve his country while his country serves him. <laughs> of course, he can resume his education when he gets out. And by volunteering, you can choose any branch of the service you like. Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Corps, Coast Guard. Have you decided what you'd like to be, Jethro? Well, yes, ma'am. I want to be a spy. <laughs> <laughs> I never gave you that notion. Well, I've seen this movie about a spy, Old Double Knot Seven. This rascal really had himself some high old times. Double Knot Seven? Oh, you, you mean oh, oh, seven. Yeah, you see, Double Knot Spies is what you call irresistible to women. This fellow spent most of his time fighting and loving and loving and fighting and then loving some more. See where you can hold your own fighting, but when it comes to loving, you're greener than a gourd. Swimming is for fish. <laughs> Besides, I gotta fix Jethro's britches. I've done let them out as far as they'll go, and they still hit him halfway up his drumsticks. <laughs> Maybe we could stretch him. Maybe so. Here, grab hold of the ends here, and we'll see if they got the give to him. Yes, ma'am. Hey, they stretch now real good. Okay, hold on. <laughs> them britches have done give all they got. Well, Granny, like you say, Quick as Jethro joins the army or something, the government will keep him in clothes and feed him, too. That's right. I do hope we're doing the right thing by sending Jethro into the service. It's like giving the United States another country to feed. Jethro <laughs> does set a great store by his vittles. Well, you know he kept Paul waiting on a truck this morning because he had to have a snack before he left. Jethro had to have a snack? Well, he said he was going to. M turkey. My turkey! I had a whole fresh roasted turkey in here! Yes, <laughs> so done snuck in, snitched it, snacked it, and snuck out. <laughs> My doggy, Jethro, you're gonna have a time deciding what to be. Soldier, sailor, coast guard, marine, airman. All pay top money, too. Close to $20 a week. That's a spy expert near that much. That's what I want to be, a double-knot spy. I don't see nothing in these government folders about joining the spies. Besides, it all seemed to me like kind of a sneaky way to make a living. Well, you ought to see this movie about them. Them double-knots lives high on the hog. Maybe the government calls them intelligence agents, like Miss Jane does. I don't see nothing about them in here, neither. Well, we'll talk about it over some new Navy. Oh, good. I ain't had nothing since breakfast but a little bitty old snack. <laughs> There's something to think about, Jethro. Do spies eat as good as soldiers and sailors? Well, gee, I don't know. This movie didn't have much eating in it. Mostly fighting and loving. Well, you can't keep that up for long without eating something. <laughs> Another thing, do spies get to wear fancy uniforms? Well, gee, I don't know. You could do with some new duds. Them britches of yours look like you're fixing a way to creek. Yeah, but spies gets lots of other dandy things, like shoes with knives that stick out of them, and suicide pills, and cigarette lighters that take pictures. Well, the food shoot is back. The one-man locust plate. <laughs> I bet you're hungry, ain't you? Oh, yes, ma'am. What's for vittles, Granny? Overlook stew. What's that? I'm stewing everything he overlooked. <laughs> and it ain't much. Go fetch your cousin Ellie. She's swimming in the cement pond. No, no. Go out the front way and around. You ain't passing my icebox again without somebody riding a shotgun on you. <laughs> you have done snitched, 
your last snack. Oh, Granny, all growing boys eat between meals. That one eats between bites. <laughs> Here's the outfit Jetro ought to join up with. The Marines. How come you pick them? Well, at least they can feed them. They got fish ponds down there the size of this house. Down where? Marine land. Yeah. We went fishing down there once. Right friendly bunch. The fish wasn't so friendly. Especially that big goomer they called a whale. Randy, you hadn't ought to try to catch him. He was just too much fish for one little woman like you. The fish ain't been born that's too much for me. All right, forget it. I ain't about to forget it. I vowed I'd come back and get him, and this is my chance. When Jethro goes down to join up with the Marines, I'm going with him. Now, hold on, Granny. Jethro ain't said he joined the Marines. I said it for him. Now, Granny, Jethro is the one that's going to serve, and Jethro is the one that's going to choose. And it ain't right for you to try to force him into the Marines just so you can get back at that fish. You hear? Yes, sir, Jim. I mean it. Yes, sir, Jed. You're the head of the clan. I wouldn't go again, your word. All right. Let's go have some vittles. You're right, Jed. Anything you say, your word is law. I'm just a poor, old, weak, obedient woman. Hey, mate. Come on into vittles. Jethro, where did you get them bananas? Big tree we thought was an alum? These was growing on them. <laughs> Them skippers bananas. A reward if he learned to swim. Shock, Sally. Swimming's easy. I could learn him in no time. Why, I just pick him up and throw him in. That's the way Uncle Jed learned me. <laughs> Trouble, boy. You just pushed yourself a double non-intelligence agent. <laughs> Help Jethro to serve his country the best he knows how. Help him to be a good soldier, a good sailor, whatever he decides to be. Thank you. Amen. 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 Paul, when Jethro goes into service, can I get me a critter to swim with? What kind of a critter? Swimming critter. Tried to learn skip, but he don't care about it. There's lots of swimming critters down to marine land. Granny. I ain't talking to Jethro. He ain't even here. I'm talking to Ellie. Remember all them friendly seals and porpoises and things? I sure do. Paul, could I get me one? If Jethro was to join up with the Marines, he could bring you one home from Marine Land. Granny. Well, he better join up with something pretty quick or we're gonna starve to death. Yeah. He didn't leave nothing for this here stew. The stew looks fine to me. I reckon it tastes fine, too. Now let's all commence eating it and stop trying to push Jethro into the service. Of course, the quicker he goes in, the quicker he'll get out. Hey, Granny, can I come in now? Are you dry? Yes, ma'am. I'd run till I'm bone dry. All right, then. Help yourself to some stew, Jethro. Thank you. Well, don't take it all. Well, sit down until you move. I can't, Uncle Jeff. These pants will cut me in two. I'll eat just standing. Right, go eat over to the sink here. Yes, sir. Wait, you forgot your... Join the Marines. I wonder how that got there. I wonder. Greetings. <laughs> oh, howdy, Miss James. Oh, don't let me disturb your lunch. I... I just brought a pinup picture for our departing service man. A pinup picture? Yes. <laughs> you think it was too daring of me to pose like that? Oh, I reckon that the bear was dead, wasn't he? <laughs> well, Jethro, have you decided what you're going to be? <laughs> oh, yes, ma'am. Like I keep telling you, I'm going to be a double knot spy. Hey, Jethro! What's a double knot spy? That's a feller that goes around fighting and loving and saving his country. Well, how? He gets other spies to tell their secrets. If it's a man spy, old double knot's got a weapon. And if it's a lady, well, he hugs and kisses her. And first thing you know, she's blabbing secrets to beat the band. <laughs> first off, we got to get him out of that spy notion. I have an idea. What is it? I will convince him he's not qualified to be a spy. Contrive to leave me alone with him. 
<laughs> you gonna have some stew? Ain't that what I just had? Yeah, I reckon it was. Oh, uh, Granny, Ellie Mae, y'all come out with me to the pantry. I got something I want to show you. Right there, Jed. You stay here with Miss Jane. Hey, but Uncle Jed, what about... It ain't nothing to eat. Oh. <laughs> Jeffro? Uh, yes? I'm going to give you a spy test. Well, a hot dog! Now, I have a very important secret, and you must get me to tell you what it is. But if you fail, you cannot be a spy. Okay. Hey, let's pretend we're meeting in a foreign country. That's where double knots hang out, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy. Well, hello there. You a spy? Yes. Me too. You got any secrets? Yes. What are they? I won't tell. Mm, that's what you think, baby. Okay, let's have it. No. 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 <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, commence blabbing. <clears throat> no. No, again? I refuse to tell my secrets. Well, guess that means I can't be a spy. Well, then don't give up so easily. <laughs> well, I done kissed you twice and hugged you to boot. Hey, you, you've got to do everything you can to make me talk. Sure it's all right with you? I'm a spy. You've got to expect these things. <laughs> You'll talk this time, I guarantee it. No, I won't. Oh, yes, you will. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I a strike of wood. Gee, I don't want to, Miss Jane, but shock heck fire, what else can a fella do? And I gotta have a long talk with that boy. <laughs> Oh, my whale. He's too big for a hook and line. Now, Jethro, are you sure joining the Marines is what you want to do? No, sir. What I want to do is be a spy. Miss Jane says I got to graduate college first. Chucks, by then I'll be too old to do any of that double knot hugging and kissing or even fighting. I'll be pretty near 25. You're gonna miss over the hill, all right. Hey, Paul, can I fetch your miss woman critter from Marine Land? We'll see, Ellie. Jethro ain't even joined yet. Well, how about if and I join the Marines, too? Well, I'm afraid not, Ellie. It says here in the paper that they can build men, but I don't see how they can build one out of you. Come on, get through. Hey, The sign said. Hot dog, look at that. Marines gets fed six times a day. <laughs> yeah, you ought to be able to manage on six squares a day, Jethro. With a few snacks stowed in, this is the outfit to join up with, Jethro. <laughs> I wonder where I go to volunteer, though. Save the sign yonder on that there fence. Just drive up there. <laughs> Wanted. Young man for training and feet. That's me. Wait a minute. There's more on that sign now. Uh, must be expert diver. Uncle Jed, if they feed me right, I'll give them any kind of dives they want. From belly flaps to double somersaults. Here comes a young fella. Maybe he can tell you where to join up. Well, can I help you folks? Well, yes, sir. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Uh, we were just reading your sign there, and... Uh, and this fine, young, handsome, good-looking fella is volunteering. Well, good diver, are you? Best in the whole world. Now, Granny, let's not stretch the truth. He is at home in the water. Ever worn a wetsuit? Well, shucks, yeah, I had on a wetsuit just this morning. That's right. Well, let's talk about training. You know, some of these marine mammals you'll be working with are pretty smart. Not a 
smart as death row. Why, he's the finest, bestest, most educated. Uh, Freddy, uh, <laughs> let's stick to the truth. Uh, the boy had graduated school. You highest in my class, too. <laughs> death row is a fine, upstanding, honest, hard-working young man. Has he had any thieving experience? Mister, for his age, I'll put him up against anybody in the world. <laughs> Glad to hear that. We have six feedings a day, seven on Sunday. Ooh! How soon can I get started? Well, we got a feeding just about now. I'll get you some gear. We'll see what you can do. Hot diggity dump! Oh, uh, you mind if we go in with him for a minute? Just see you get started on the right foot. Sure. Go right in through this gate. <laughs> Jethro joins up, I'm gonna see, can I take you home? And I'm gonna put you in the cement pond. Me and you, we'll learn Skipper to swim. Do you like that? Huh? Well, I had a little trouble finding gear to fit Jethro. He's bigger than the rest of our divers. He's a husky boy, all right. <laughs> Finally located one of the old style suits that was big enough. Well, that's mighty nice of you to do that for the boy. Well, that's my job. I'm General Factola. See you later. <laughs> That's the closest I've ever been to it, General. <laughs> told me to put on. Well, I reckon you just about got to do what he says. He's a general. Boy, I sure hope the Marines don't do much marching. These shoes must weigh 100 pounds. Couldn't stop, though. Be a long time wearing through them soles. You ought to have this belt he gave me. It weighs another 100. And so does this dad blasted helmet. It's true. I wouldn't do a lot of belly aching right away. The general went to a lot of trouble to find you wearing them suits that fit you. Yeah, well, he can have it back. I'm plumb tuckered out just walking here. That's why they feed you six times a day. But Uncle Jed, look what they give me to eat. Raw fish. You're right, generous helping. But Uncle Jed, I can't eat raw fish. I'm sure the general don't expect you to. Well, what does he expect me to do with him? Cook him. Cook him? Of course. Marines has got to be able to do for themselves. Now, the general is just testing you. Get busy. If you can't come home with me, then I'm going to stay right here with you. That's right. I'm with you. You like it? Let's play. Come on. <laughs> Have another in Jet Rose. Plenty here. No, thanks, Uncle Jet. That'll hold me till the next meeting. <laughs> Snap to attention, Jethro. You're gonna come to jail. Hey, help me out. Help me out. <laughs> well, what in the name of Moby Dick is going on? Oh, we're having yourself a mess of fish. You mean you ate those fish I gave you? Oh, no, sir. Not all of them. There's plenty left. Jethro, stir up the fire and cook the general fish. Oh, no, no. You're not supposed to cook those fish. Oh, well, I reckon you can blame that on me, General. He might have ate him raw if I let him. Oh, never mind. Grab your helmet and what's left of the fish and follow me over to the tank. You hear that, boy? He ain't gonna have to walk in them shoes after all. General, go put you in a tank. I've come back to make friends with you, Mr. Whale. Come on up and visit with me. Come on, stick your pretty hand up. Fine, 
fireworks. Everybody went in the water except the one who was supposed to. But, Uncle Jed, if I'd have gone in with them lead shoes and belt and all, I'd have sunk like a rock. You're a chicken, Jethro. Now I'll never get my whale. Count your blessings, Granny. You got the greatest fish story ever told. What you mean? You're the first fisherman that was ever thrown back by the fish. <laughs> We had good news for her. Thank no account, young, and I wish he would show up. I'd hickory stick him good. Granny, you mean Johnny Pope that used to play the guitar and sing? Don't call what he done singing. A bullfrog makes the same noise and you can eat his legs. Crazy, <laughs> shiftless, no account. That's Johnny Pope. Let his ma work her fingers to the bone for him. And ain't hardly wrote to her in two years. Sit down, I'll cut your hair. Oh, I don't need a haircut, Granny. I'll decide when you need a haircut. Now sit down. <laughs> That's the trouble with the young ones today. You give them everything fine, and what do you get for it? A lot of back talk. All spoiled rotten. That's what you are. Granny? What a folk thinks your boy's coming in on a train today. Is Jethro around? He's cutting wood. I'll fetch him. Get up from there. You don't need a haircut. <laughs> All of you, that's what you are. Gimme, gimme, gimme. That's all you know. <laughs> Boy, Granny sure isn't a tizzy over Johnny Pope. Yeah, just the mention of his name sets her off. And when she's going, she can build a barn out of a berry box. <laughs> Ain't gonna be nothing but trouble with that Johnny Poke around here. Jethro will get to be just like him. Them two always was thick as cold molasses. First thing you know, Jethro will quit writing to his mom. He'll go to loafing all day, scrapping with Ellie, smart mouth and his Uncle Jed, and back sassing me. <laughs> Sass me, will you? <laughs> now, Jethro and me will drive down to the freight yards. I reckon Johnny will be riding in on the rods or empty boxcar. You know, Paul, I'll be real glad to see old Johnny Poke again. Me and him used to have some dandy wrestling matches. Well, I don't believe I'd wrestle with him on this trip. He's growed a lot since them days. Well, I'll bet y'all can still whoop him. And I'll bet you he'd let you. <laughs> but uh, you're a young lady now. I want you to act like one and look like one. Go put on a dress. Well, Johnny wouldn't even know me with the dress on. Well, I'll introduce you now, Scoop. <laughs> hey, Uncle Jed, what is Granny so steamed up about? I'll tell you on the way down to the freight yards. Come on. And hey, let me tell you what happened. I was outside chopping wood to beat the band, and I bent over to pick up the last stick of wood just like this. Write your ma. I write ma once a week. And you write her twice a week. That's a good idea. Come on, let's go. Hey, fire, Uncle Jed. I ain't got that much to tell her. <laughs> you quit smart now than your Uncle Jed. I ain't smart now than Uncle Jed. Now he's sassing me. See what that Johnny Polk has done, and he ain't even here yet. <laughs> is Johnny Poe coming here? Yeah, and if we don't get out of here, come on, let's go. I ain't done talking to him yet. Somebody's got to set him straight. Well, I ain't done nothing. He's sassing me again. <laughs> you give Jethro a good talking to. I'll wait for him outside. That's better. Sit down. When I say sit, you sit. <laughs> Let her blow off a little steam. I'll see you out front. I declare I don't know what the young'uns of today are coming to. Back talking, sassing their elders. 
Riding them surfboards down the freeway. <laughs> going to the beach, having them bikini roasts. <laughs> you sit still when I'm talking to you. <laughs> See what I mean? No respect. That's today's young'uns. Back sassin' young whelps. No more manners than a hound dog puppy. I say they ought to be learnt a lesson. Showed what kind of honorary whelps they are. They ought to be punished. <laughs> Jethro. <laughs> Jethro. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean it. Oh, Jethro. I'm a dragster's whale, I'm a rocket's tail, I'm a bargain sail, have a great figure helping to me, I'm a whaling fool, I'm the end of school, baby play it cool. There you go, kid. Thank you, Johnny. You're the greatest. Ain't that the truth? Keep the line moving. My mother and I got on the train in Salt Lake City, but it's taken all this time to get back here to your car. Crazy. <laughs> Keep the line moving. I'm president of your Omaha fan club. Like, wow. We took up a collection so I could come out and see you at the Hollywood Bowl. You got a ticket? No, not yet. Here you go. <gasps> Johnny! Hey. That'll be five bucks. <laughs> All right, girls, the train's coming into Los Angeles. Everybody out. Oh, no. Now you can see Johnny at the Hollywood Bowl. Oh. Now, come on, back to your own cars. Your parents are probably looking for you. You keep buying my records, you hear? And them Johnny Poke guitars, and Johnny Poke sweatshirts, and Johnny Poke charm bracelets, and anything else got my name on it. <laughs> OK, Johnny, time to get into the old clothes. Oh, man, I don't want to do that freight yard bit again. Listen, you've got 10,000 screaming teenagers waiting for you at the L.A. station. Well, let them have a thrill. I kind of like them girls grabbing at me. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got a contract to deliver you to the Hollywood Bowl in one piece. Now, you do as I tell you. Just a minute, Mr. Manager. You are talking to Johnny Polk, the greatest singer ever to come out of the hills. Listen, you gully jumper. You take away your echo chamber, the guy who plays the guitar for you, the ten-piece band, a quarter of a million dollars worth of publicity, and my brains, and you'll be back in the hills where I found you calling hogs. I'll get into those clothes. You're getting off at the freight yard, as always. Things. 
Yeah, it ain't the best way to travel, but when your pockets is empty, that's a good place to put your pride. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Well, how do you like that manage your mind? I'm making $30,000 a week traveling in a private car, and he lets me get off the trains out of dime in my pocket. You don't have to put on airs with us, Johnny. We your friends. We your home folks. We don't care if you're busted. <laughs> busted? Man, I'm rich. <laughs> oh, you think these are my clothes? No, no, I just wear these to get away from the girls. I got 50 suits on board that train. I got suits made out of gold, out of silver. Alligator, snakeskin, you name it, I got it. Uh, what train is that, Johnny? Uh, you mean this one? No, man. That big silver streamliner, the Johnny Polk special. <laughs> well, it's gone now. Just go out. Along with your 50 suits, huh? Johnny, I think you're on the fever. Man, he'll be all right as quick as he gets his belly full of granny's grits and jowls. Come on. Grits and jowls? Man, I don't eat nothing but steaks that thick. I got a special cook travels with me every place I go. Is he on that silver train that run off with your silver suits? <laughs> yeah. You see, I couldn't ride into the Los Angeles station because there's 10,000 girls there waiting for me. And they are all crazy about me. Uh, well, come on, Johnny. Come on where? Home with us. Now, don't you worry, Jethro. I've done whopped up some of my most powerful spell-busting powder. I'll have you back to a boy in no time. <laughs> Magic powder, white as snow, bring back the one that I love so. Eye of a newt, tail of a toad, bust up the spell that I done so. <laughs> Jethro, I've done everything I can. I've got to call on a higher power for help. Don't you worry. Everything's gonna be fine. I know I don't deserve it. I've been honorary and short-tempered. But if you turn that puppy dog back into Jethro, I'll mend my ways. I'll be kind and gentle. And I won't do no complaining. You must have got into the flower. I'd best get you out of here before Granny sees the mess you made. <laughs> and I won't drink none of my rheumatism medicine without I got an honest-to-goodness twinge. <laughs> and I won't scrap with Miss Drysdale. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It's a step in the right direction. What's your hurry, boy? These sneakers is too little on me. I got to go get my boots on. Come on, Johnny. I told you I ain't staying here. I'm going to the hotel and have me a party. Now, I promised your ma I'd find you and look out for you. First thing you need is some good hot vittles. First thing I need is a good stiff belt. <laughs> well, if that's what it's going to take, I might just do you some good at that. I'm staying, I'm staying. <laughs> Don't you remember, Jethro? A tall boy, about so high, lots of thick black hair, real handsome, and the nicest young one you'd ever want to meet, if you ain't already. <laughs> him back and take me.
told you to come straight to the hotel. Where are you? You ain't gonna believe this, Eddie, but I don't know where I am. <laughs> now, you listen to me, Johnny Polk. You get over to this hotel and sober up. I ain't touched a drop, and I'll be there quick as I can make it. I sure got no reason to hang around here. Hi there, Johnny. Remember me? I'm Ellie May. We used to wrestle when we was little. I hear a girl's voice. That means trouble. You've got a show to do tonight. Now get over here. Cool it, Eddie. I'll see you at the bowl. <laughs> so you're little Ellie. Yep. Granny says tell you that Vittles will be ready directly. Oh, crazy. <laughs> but Pa says first, you've got to write a letter to your mom. Well, I'd rather wrestle. Well, Pa says I ain't supposed to do that no more. Now, here's everything you need. Uh, honey, I don't write so good. Oh. Well, I'll write it for you. <laughs> Tell me what to say. Oh, baby. Do you, Ma? <laughs> mm, ain't that heavenly? <laughs> Oh, and speaking of that, I still ain't in no hurry if you ain't. And I've mended my honorary ways like I promised. Now, Granny, I know how you feel about Johnny Pope, but I hope you don't go to whomping him right off. What? I grant you he needs it. That boy tramples on the truth worse than he did back home. He was such a liar then, he used to have to get somebody else to call his dog for him. <laughs> Are you talking about sweet, lovable, hard-working Johnny Polk? Oh, I'm talking about lazy, good-for-nothing Johnny Polk. <laughs> Boy used to lay around the cabin so much his ma had to dust him. He said it. I didn't. Who are you talking to? Uh-uh. Nobody. Jed, can't you say anything good about Johnny Polk? Well, yes, I can. Appears like he'd give up singing. You can get rid of his guitar. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Granny, that boy used to sing so bad that tomcats would throw things at him. He said it. I didn't. What's wrong about? Uh, uh, the young uns of today, Jed. Oh, I love them all. They're so sweet and good and kind and well-behaved. Have you got into your rheumatism medicine? No. I took the pledge. Cross my heart. I ain't had a drop. <laughs> now, Johnny, stop that nibbling on my ear. Paul says you can't have Biddles till you get this letter up. <laughs> letter, baby. Let's have a little action. Let's what to see. Let's what? What to see? Well, how about the fruit? <laughs> Swim? Oh, yeah, we gotta see him in Pine Out Back. <laughs> baby, how can you look so round and be so square? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Johnny. Well, forget about it, honey. I don't dig those new jumping around steps too much myself. Give me the good old days when we used to hang on to one another. Remember this? I sure do! Ellie, <laughs> oh. hey, I told you, you can't wrestle no more. Hey, Pa can't. I whooped him quicker than I used to. <laughs> hey, ladylike. Well, he started it. Oh, he did, did he? Yes, sir. He says, let's have a little action. <laughs> well, we might just do that. <laughs> Hey, man, how long I got to split wood? Until you earn this $10 to send back home your mom. Listen, Mr. Clappett, you get me to my hotel and I'll send more $10,000. You know, I'd rather have 10 of these than 10 million of them dream dollars you keep talking about. Man, I use those to light cigars. I'm worth a million dollars. I got six gold records. Four secretaries do nothing but answer my fan mail. There's Johnny Polk record player, Johnny Polk guitar, Johnny Polk picture books. Hold on that silver train, huh, boy? <laughs> now, hold on, Granny. You ain't gonna want with my guitar, are you? Why, I ain't gonna want that sweet young'un. I wanna hear him play and sing. You what? <laughs> that ought to buy me a few extra days. <laughs> well, uh, you've been bragging a lot. Uh, you show us something, you won't have to chop no more wood. Here, you can keep this. Man, you're on. Now, this here's a song that made me famous. <laughs> Well, I'm a dragster's wheel, and I'm a rocket tail, and I'm a bargain sale. Have a great big helping of me. You didn't hear me at my best, Granny. I thought you was fine, Johnny. 
But I didn't have no microphone out there, and I didn't have no electric guitar. You was just dandy. <laughs> you ought to hear me with the echo chamber and a great big band and chorus backing me up. I'd flip you. I'm so good, I flip myself. I'll take your word for it, Johnny. <laughs> you ought to see the way the girls fight one another just to get close to me. Thousands of them screaming, we want Johnny. Johnny's the king. When I commence singing, they swoon with joy. And then when I'm done singing, they trample one another to get my autograph. I have to fight my way through a solid wall. The girls get my limousine. Yeah, Granny, I'm the greatest. Give me that, you young whippersnapper. Now, you sit down. I'm going to tell you a few things. Sorry, Granny, I got to get to the bowl. When I say sit, you sit. <laughs> Assassin, young scallywag. Now, there's one that wants punishing. <laughs> you ain't got the manners of a hermit. Sun, clear and bold Grabbing my future Precious as gold Breathless moan It's how they fuel my run Each heartbeat screams I'm not done Freedom's calling It's ringing my name Through the strength I claim my fame Run, run, gotta get out Gotta find my route This decision's a trap A that there's no doubt Run, run to the end Till I shout I'm free at last, what life's all about Runs burning, sweat drips like tears Each step forward, I'll strip in my fears Got strength for so many minutes until I shout I'm free at last, what life's all about to me. Now, your pa needs a wife, and you need them all. The widow Pope needs a husband, and that no-account boy of hers needs a pa. I'm gonna have four people a slurping from one trough of happiness. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jed needs a wife, and Ellie needs them all. The widow needs a husband, and her boy needs a pa. And who's gonna make them all as happy as can be? That little old matchmaker, me. <laughs> I don't like this, not one bit. Now, Jed Clampett wouldn't get married without confiding in me. Now, I want to know what's going on. All I know is that Granny asked me to drive Ellie May to the airport to meet the bride-to-be. Well, I don't like it. Who is this widow poke? Apparently, she's an old friend from back in the hills. Probably after Jed for his money. I, I don't like it, I tell you. I doubt that money is her motive, Chief. Her son is Johnny Polk, the teenager's favorite singer. I don't care who he is. I still don't like it. He's reputed to earn over a million dollars a year. A million a year? Yes. I'm beginning to like it. You'll need a good safe bank for all that money. <laughs> Ellie will be ready in a minute. What do you think about Jed getting married? 
Well, it comes as quite a surprise. It certainly does. If you think you're surprised, wait till Jed hears about it. You mean to say Mr. Clampett doesn't know he's getting married? He don't even know the widow's coming to town. If he did, he would stubborn up on me like a mule in a mud puddle. Well, aren't you taking a lot for granted? Yes, it takes two to make a marriage. Well, two's making this marriage. The widow Polk and me. <laughs> Granny, I feel very strongly that we should sit down with Mr. Clampett and talk this over. So do I. I figured you would. That's why I sent him hunting. <laughs> Granny, you can't... Now, you listen to me. There ain't a man been born that knows what's best for him. Jed is too young to be single and miserable. <laughs> but he's very happy. Where'd you hear that? From him? Well, as a matter of fact, yes. What does he know about it? <laughs> Underneath all that happiness? He's miserable. <laughs> Jed needs a wife, and I'm going to see that he gets one. How's that, Miss Jane, Mr. Josh? Hello, Ellie. Now, Ellie will point the widow out to you, though she'll be hard to miss, because she's so beautiful. The widow, Polk? <laughs> you just be quiet and point. Well, I hope Mr. Clappett won't be angry with us for our part in this. You leave Jed to me. I've been matchmaking better than 50 years. I ain't had a failure yet. <laughs> By the time you get the widow back, Jed will be dressed in his courting clothes, paw on the ground, getting ready to propose. <laughs> Hi! Where's Ellie going? Who? Ellie Mae. Ellie Mae who? Ellie Mae Alfalfa Hayes. I don't think I know any. Granny, I'm talking about the girl sitting in the back of that car. What car? The car going out the gate. What gate? Never mind. I don't see so good, Jed. Yeah, and like a hawk, you don't see so good. Well, we're going to get back to my hunting. Uh, Jed, you got to get all duded up. To go hunting? Uh, you know, Beverly Hill style. What kind of hunting is that? I'll tell you about it, Jed. It's plum wonderful. Now, you get all dressed up. You come out here and you sit on the porch with a handful of flowers and a box of candy. <laughs> now, Mr. Rabbit comes by, sees you sitting there, and he says, what's that fella doing sitting there? Then he says to himself, all dressed up, he can't be hunting. <laughs> then Mr. Cottontail comes hopping up to, to sniff the flowers. You drop your hat on them, and <laughs> you got yourself a rabbit. Beverly Hill style. Yeah. Sound good. Sure does. Real smart. Ain't it? He sniffs a flower. Yeah. Drop the hat. Yeah. Got a rabbit. That's right. One question. Ask me. Who's the candy for? The winner, Polk. <laughs> coming to see you? Of course. But if hospitality has become a crime, then shoot me, because I'm guilty. Is that where Ellie's going to meet the widow? Yeah. But, Jed, you don't, you don't have to let her in. Lock the gates on her. Sick the dogs on her. Shoot her in the leg. She'll get the hint that she ain't welcome. <laughs> what does it matter that... Poor old Granny is dying of lonesomeness to see the dearest, sweetest friend she ever had in the whole world. <laughs> the widow Pope? <laughs> like sisters we was. But this is your place, Jed. You don't have to let her stay. We'll go to one of them flop houses. <laughs> flop houses? Though goodness knows we won't get no rest. With all them men beating on that beautiful woman's door all night. What beautiful woman is that, Granny? The widow Pope. <laughs> Granny, you used to say that she looked like the backside of a mud fence. <laughs> well, as a child she was plain, but she blossomed into a lovely young girl. A girl? The widow Pope? <laughs> I don't think she's seen 30. 
Oh, she's seen it all right. She just can't remember it. <laughs> Connect me with one of them flop houses. <laughs> you know good and well the weather was welcome here. I just don't want you to do no matchmaking. Matchmaking? Why, I don't know what you're talking about. Every man is free to pick his own wife. A man picks his own wife like a tomato picks a farmer. <laughs> Especially with you working around the patch. Jed, if I was to try matchmaking, why would I try with a widow? Don't know why not. Don't know who's got more going for her. A widow knows all about men. The only man knows about her is dead. I declare I don't know what makes you so suspicious. Maybe it's because every year for 15 years you've tried to get me married. Yeah. And you're spoiling my perfect record. What do you got against marriage, anyway? I ain't got nothing against marriage, Granny. I'm all for it. Yeah? Of course. Man needs a wife. That's right. There's a lot of things you can't blame on the government. <laughs> Worst hunting I ever did see. Hey, fiddles ready, Granny? We'll eat when our company comes. Now get upstairs and get cleaned up, both of you. Who's coming? The widow Polk. The finest cook in Cass County and the prettiest young woman ever to come out of the hills. Hmm. Three of them, huh? <laughs> well, Uncle Jed, the hunt around here sure is sorry. Well, don't worry about it, boy. Granny just taught me how to hunt Beverly Hills style. Well, tell me. Well, you get yourself all duded up. You sit on the front porch with a handful of flour and a box of candy. <laughs> yeah. Well, then, along comes this rabbit. <laughs> Snips the flowers. Take off your hat. I'll see that man happy married if it kills him. <laughs> Don't drive too fast, Miss Hardaway. You'll bend Johnny. I'll be careful. Uh, the name is Hathaway. Mrs. Polk, do you carry that picture every place you go? Well, up to now, I ain't never been no place, but I wouldn't go without Johnny. <laughs> ain't he beautiful, Ellie? Yes, ma'am, Miss Polk, he sure enough is. Uh, right he's handsome. He's an angel. That's what he is. <laughs> Do you like him, Miss Hardaway? Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, and the name is Hathaway. I understand your son's income is about a million dollars a year. Yes, and every month, rain or shine, regular as clockwork, Johnny sends me five dollars. <laughs> what do you do with all that money? Well, up to now, most of it's gone to pay for this picture. <laughs> Isn't he beautiful, Ellie? Yes, ma'am, he sure enough is. Oh, he's an angel. <laughs> he sings like one, too. Have you heard my boy sing, Miss Hardaway? Hathaway? <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, he's excellent. I hope he's putting all his money in a good, safe bank. <laughs> he sings in a gold suit. Have you seen him in his gold suit, Ellie? No, am I? I ain't. Me neither. <laughs> it was sure nice of your granny to pay my way out here so that I could see Johnny. To see Johnny? Well, didn't she say anything about your getting married? Well, yes, yeah, she did mention something about Mary and Jed, but I'd have to ask Johnny first. <laughs> Isn't he beautiful, Ellie? Yes, ma'am, he sure enough is. Oh, the salt of the earth, that boy. By the way, where is he salting away all his money? Mr. Drysdale is president of our finest bank. Oh, well, what bank is that, Miss Hardaway? Hathaway. And it's the same bank where Mr. Clampett has his account. Oh, perhaps your son would like to become a depositor. Well, I'll speak to him about it. Wonderful. Uh, Will you ask Miss Hardaway to slow down? She's abandoned Johnny again. Slow down, Miss Hardaway. <laughs> well, howdy, folks. Uh, welcome to California, will you? Oh, Jed, you shouldn't have done it. <laughs> well, uh... Matter of fact, I, uh, Danny Big Picture, your boy, ain't it? Ain't he beautiful? May I carry him into the house for you, Mrs. Polk? Yes, but handle him careful. You spent the money I sent your ma. That was for her to come out here and marry Jed. <laughs> so you ain't matchmaking, huh? 
my cap and walk all the way to Sibley to buy that. And I got all of Johnny's albums. Every time a new one comes out, I sell a pig and buy it. That's my boy. Ain't he beautiful? And he sings like a angel. I'm a dragster's whale. I'm a rocket's tail. Here, Jed, shoot me. If trying to make two people happy is a crime, then I'm guilty. Shoot me. Annie, we've been going through this for 15 years now. Why don't you give up? Because at last I found the right woman for you. The one who can make you happy. You talking about the widow poke? Sweetest little thing that ever drawed a breath. Granny, her first husband was so henpecked he molted twice a year. Are you saying that Clyde and Emma Polk didn't have a happy marriage? No, as I recall, uh, marriage was real happy. It was a living together afterward that caused all the trouble. All right, Jim. I can see the widow ain't welcome. Connect me with one of them flop houses. <laughs> Jeff, I'm calling one of them flop houses. The widow and me will be leaving right away. Better take this with you, Granny. You're going to need it to stand off them fellas that's going to be beating on a widow's door all night. <laughs> Pass you something with her? I reckon not. No trouble at all with these handy pot passers. The whole place is handy, Emma. No trouble at all to take care of. Have you seen this pretty green tablecloth? Glued right onto the table. Then sakes. Then we have to take it off to wash it. Just go over it with a wet rag now and then. <laughs> have you seen this thing? Keeps the plates from sliding off the table. <laughs> I never seen the like. Ah. That ain't nothing. Take a look at them handy pockets built right into the table. I'll be sweet. <laughs> what they fur? We don't know. I'm terribly sorry. I hope you'll excuse me. That was my wife calling. How long you been married, Mr. Drysdale? 20 years. Oh, ain't that wonderful? They've had 20 years of happiness. No, we had 25 years of happiness. Then we got married. I reckon many a man has lost his best friend by marrying her. She had a cut up, always funnin'. I think that's what's kept him so young. No doubt. What's your secret, Widow? Emma. Hmm? What? What's your secret? Well, if we're a telling, I, I reckon my worst one is, uh, I hit the jug a little. <laughs> just a nip or two on cold days. The winter fun's just like Jed. <laughs> I guess that's what kept them both so young. Remarkably youthful. <laughs> Uncle Jed and the winter? Jethro, it ain't polite to talk with your mouth full. Well, my mouth ain't full. Then fill it. <laughs> but I, I, I'm done eating, Granny. Granny, uh, I reckon we're all done eating. Oh, then good. Now, while the table is being cleared and the dishes washed, maybe our young couple would like to go for a walk or a drive. We sure would. Come on, Jethro. Sit down. I'm <laughs> talking about the young couple at the head of the table. Well, uh, matter of fact, Widow, I would like a couple of words with you alone. The parlor is empty. Draw the drapes. It makes it more cozy. And have some of them sour lemon drops and get you all puckered up. <laughs> I've been matchmaking better in 50 years. Ain't had a failure yet. <laughs> Sit down a minute, widow. There's something I ought to say to you. 
But I got something I ought to say to you first, Jeff. Well, I, what I got to say is mighty important. But I can make mine quick and merciful. Jeff, I can't marry you. Now, what did you want to say? Come to think of it, mine ain't so important. <laughs> what are you doing sitting here? The parlor's empty. I'll put on some dancing music. <laughs> I know how you young folk like to rock your rolls and jitter your bugs. <laughs> Jed, I hope I ain't broke your heart. Is there anything I can do to make it up to you? Well, yes, there is, widow. You can help save me from another 15 years of Granny's matchmaking. You game? I sure am. I've had 20 years of it myself. <laughs> <laughs> granny! Granny! Uncle Jeb and the widow's back. Where in tarnation have they been all this time? Looks to me like they've been to the beach. The beach! Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Name a good sense here, you get up for it. Surfing, Granny. Me and Emma have been making a Malibu scene along with the other kids. Kids? <laughs> Ain't that a beautiful board, Granny? Jed Larn me to hang ten. <laughs> we really shot the curls today. Guess what? What they talking about? Well, that there surfing talk, Granny. Shooting the curls when you come down off. Cool, and Jethro, Granny just ain't groovy. <laughs> Say, chick, let you and me go in there and put on some of them whaling Johnny Poke sides and stop out some what to see. I think you, Big Daddy, you're real bull. We're going steady. <laughs> Miss Jean, what happened? Well, Granny, there, isn't it just marvelous? And the credit is yours. You told them to act their age. <laughs> well, they ain't doing it. Well, Hi, Granny. You want to go Granny hunting with us tonight? No, I don't. Real cube, ain't she? Well, Granny ain't Jetty just too much. He plum turns me off. How about the drag race tomorrow, baby? You bought it, man. <laughs> Come on, Granny. Get with it. Oh. 